name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at VerifiedInvesting.com. All right, so we have a lot to cover today. Economic news, earnings news, charts are moving. Let's get right into it. Follow me over here, guys. So let's go through our key headlines for the day first and foremost, all right? So number one, TSM, Taiwan Semiconductor, beat on earnings. Now, year over year, their earnings were down, but expectations were factoring that in. So that's key. So ultimately, they came out beating the lowered expectations. And what did they do? They said AI could boost their revenue this year by 20%. All of a sudden, what do we see? Taiwan Semi is up and pretty much the semiconductors across the board. We'll look at AMD a little bit later, but that is into a major double top. Can it break through? Let's look at the charts in just a few minutes. Next up, we have Watches of Switzerland falls 30% as the wealthy pull back on, uh, from buying luxury watches. Now, this one caught my attention because... Again, you could say that, oh, it's not that big of a deal, but really what you look for as an economy starts to slow, the wealthy oftentimes are the ones that will pull back first. And if they're pulling back and they're feeling a little bit of pain, what does it trickle down to in the middle class and below? So I think that's something to keep an eye on here is that, you know, watches of, of Switzerland, they're selling Rolexes, they're selling all these other name brands, right? And if they're seeing a major drop and they're talking about, you know, revenue declining substantially, what does that tell us about the global environment as well as here in the U.S., the domestic environment? Discover Financial falls over 10% after earnings missed on rising charge-offs. So the reason this headline caught my attention, number one, Discover is a trading, a potential trading opportunity today. Number two, why did they miss? Basically what they're telling us is that people are starting to not pay their credit card bills. I've talked about in these streams many times over about how we see bigger and bigger debts the debt on credit cards, over a trillion dollars. And what we're seeing is weakening, continuing in that area. It might be slow right now. The jobs market is still strong, but it is coming. And you're seeing it in companies like Discover Financial. Next up, Apple removes its O2 sensor uh, sensing feature so that they can start reselling their watch. The stock is up on the back of that this morning along with the entire market. All right, next up we have Jamie Dimon and David Solomon. Jamie Dimon, for those of you that don't know, I'm sure we all know, but he is the CEO of, of J.P. Morgan Chase. And we obviously have uh, David Solomon, the CEO of, of Goldman Sachs. What caught my attention here was that we were looking at Davos, where I was watching some, some stuff on, from Davos, being, they're being interviewed there. And they have a much different take than a lot of the other players out there. If you look at analysts, if you look at the media, if you look at all these other players, they're talking about a soft landing, no landing at all, everything's gonna be perfect. Yet these major players, some of the biggest financial heads in the world, you could arguably say they actually control much of the world, they are sending out warning signs about the economy. These are the things I take note of, guys. I'm giving you my inside track to what I look for when I'm looking out towards the next 12 months. You know, I don't necessarily care what one analyst says over at this company or that company. I don't care about that. I'm looking at the big players, the ones that see the underside data that you and I never will see. They're the ones that I personally want to listen to. All right, let's talk some economic news. Building permits forecast, uh, 1.48 million. Actual was 1.5, so a little bit better on building permits. Housing starts were, were forecasted at 1.43 million. They also came in better. So the housing market-wise, a little bit better than expected. Philly Fed Manufacturing Index was forecast at minus 7. It came in a little bit weaker at minus 10.6. So again, we're seeing this mix of data, right? Some good, some bad, some stronger, some weaker. Looking at the Philly Fed employment, it came in at minus, uh, forecast was minus 2.5. It came in at 1.8. So that's a little bit better, right? And lastly, jobless claims forecast were 207,000, guys. It came in at 187,000. That is a remarkably low number for people filing for unemployment. So again, when we saw this, so the markets were rallying up and we're gonna take a look. In fact, let's jump over to the charts right now and take a quick look. If we jump over to the charts, what do we see here on the S&P 500 pre-market? We see that the markets have rallied up. And then interestingly enough, look at this. We were rallying sharply going into that economic data. And honestly, that jobless claims number shocked me. 
That was a very strong number. And we know that good data usually means bad for the stock market. So yes, we're still net positive, but look at how we've sold off a little bit on the back of those jobless claims better than expected numbers. All right, so again, markets are trending up today. They're still up. To be honest, they're up pretty sizably. This is where we closed yesterday, right? So we're still up multiple dollars on the S&P 500 or on the SPY, but we are off of these levels. Now, as we continue into some charts, let's take a look at the 10-year yield. The 10-year yield is perking up here. Take a look. We talked about the likelihood, and I've said this now for probably a month, that I thought the 10-year the yield would rise back up. We knew we were at resistance right here right in that level. We're now peaking above that level, trading at 4.12%. My guess is, and I said this yesterday, this is where we're headed, right in this vicinity. It coordinates with some big levels right here, right around 4.33%. Now, again, if we do get through that, maybe we touch 4.55%, but again, that'll probably be at the beginning of February if we get a really strong non-farm payrolls number. But right now, I'm looking for 4.3, 4 4.33% on the 10-year. Again, um, for those of you in my service at InTheMoneyStocks.com, we unloaded our TLT and we actually went long TBT. TBT goes up when yields go up. When yields go down, the TLT goes up. And so again, I'm just playing the yields using TLT and TBT, opposing players there. Okay, so that's one thing here. Now let's look at the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar continues to be relatively strong, right? So yesterday we had a little bit of a pause. Here's the U.S. dollar chart. We were bouncing off support. Remember the bull flag we talked about yesterday and, and the previous few days? We're continuing up. I have my first target. We're getting closer and closer to that first target. First target is going to be 104 and change. I think it's about 104.22 or so on the Dixie. Again, we're not very far away from that. That's going to be big resistance. Now, the biggest move, if we talk about, let's just say the dollar continues, let's say instability globally in the Middle East, in, in, in uh, you know, Russia, Ukraine, if it continues to kind of get worse and worse and the safety trade comes in, what's my max upside on the U.S. dollar? All we have to do is zoom out on this chart. We see a bigger channel developing here. Take a look right here, high pivot, right? And then you have this period here, this hit right here, and this low. And so the idea is, is that if we continue up and get through this 104.22 area, your max upside is probably around 105.20, 105.30, whatever that level is right there. Notice the channel continuing to hold price within it. So target one, target two, very obvious to look. Now, Let's take a look at some other things. So if you go to the S&P 500, we just talked about that on an intraday basis, but let's quickly flip over to the daily chart. The daily chart yesterday tested that major level, and I've talked about this now for a few days, right? So we have this major level here to here to here. And I was basically saying yesterday and the day before that this is the level I'm watching. As long as we stay above the level, above this upsloping trend line here, the markets have a neutral to positive bias. If we close and confirm below this level, you then actually open a door for a significant drop to the downside. Yesterday, it might be hard for you guys to see, we pierced the line. By the end of the day, they got that market back above it and the markets are safe. Lo and behold, what's happening today, we're rallying to the upside on the back of technology. Taiwan Semi earnings are really helping be a catalyst for technology and semiconductor stocks today. So right now, markets are safe. Now what we start doing is turning our attention to the high end of this, uh, of this area right up here. Here, can we break this upper level around 480? If you break 480 on the spiders, I think you have a clear shot to hitting 5,000 on the S&P 500, which would basically be about 500 on the spiders, right? So you'd get another 10, 15, $20 up move in the S&P, or the spiders, I should say, uh, before next resistance. Let's look at Taiwan Semi. So here's Taiwan Semi. Look at this great move on Taiwan Semi, right? So this is where it closed yesterday, right in this in this area right here, um, right over here. Look at the move this morning pre-market. So we're talking about yesterday closing around 102 to 103. It's trading above 110 near 111. Flipping over to our daily chart, where is our resistance lines? So first and foremost, what I do here is I zoom out on the chart, right? So I want to get a big view. And this is how I analyze charts. I, I don't just look at a micro view and like zoom in with my magnifying glass. I look at the big view first, 
get my big general kind of bearings, right? It's like, imagine you step outside. You don't look at this one blade of grass right here. You first, you take a full view. Look at that full view first, the big view. You see where is it trading on the chart? What are your bigger term trend lines? And then you move to a much more micro sense. And that gives you really the good view because to be honest, sometimes a larger time frame will tell you something that will sway you from doing something on a smaller time frame. Like if I look at a monthly chart, and I see a bear flag, and I look at the weekly chart, and I see a bear flag, but the daily chart has a small bull flag, do I really wanna go with the daily chart when I see the bigger time frames, which are more powerful, telling me that eventually price is gonna go down? Or if I do go to with that bull flag on the daily versus the bear on the weekly and the monthly, what you have to do is you have to be very nimble. You know the bigger move is eventually coming to the downside with high probability, so you wanna be in and be out quickly. So that's why, again, time frames are so important. So. Looking at Taiwan Semi right here, the first thing I see is an upsloping trend line here. Obviously, that's of no consequence since price is up. The other thing I'm seeing here, if we zoom out even more, let me look here, I could see that eventually at one point we had broken out. So you could see this wedge pattern was forming. Look at that. So this is just good information, right? Because now what we can see is that we had this wedge pattern, right? And so if I zoom out here, we had this beautiful wedge pattern on Taiwan Semi right through here right to here and right kind of here and even right here. And then look, does that look like a breakout to you on the daily chart going into earnings today? And look at how many, I mean, really for the last month, we've been trading above that level. The other thing that per perked, my, piqued my interest here is that if you looked at other semiconductors like AMD and uh, Broadcom and NVIDIA, those semis are like way up here, right? Those are, they've just been going straight up. Taiwan Semi has been kind of consolidating here, right? So again, it leads you to understand, like, like if someone came to me and said, hey, should I short Taiwan Semi going into earnings? I would look at this and say, no way. Now, if they say going long, what I would say, well, the chart might be favorable to that, but there's obviously risks with earnings, right? You never know 100% on anything, and with earnings, there's always a little bit more risk. But, all right, so now we have our bearings. We know that this is a bullish pattern leading into the earnings move. Earnings-wise, we're now trading right here at 110, so we're right up in that vicinity right up there. So now what I do is I look back on the chart and I try to find levels in this range. And I do see a level for today that I will watch as a day trade only. I'm not ready to swing trade short. This, this is a bullish pattern with a breakout today or continued breakout. But look at this. So if you go back all the way to 2022, basically back to February, there's a gap fill right here on this chart, okay? So you're going all the way back here. What that tells me is there's a line right in this range, which is right around 116, that there might be resistance as price fills gap. Okay, so again, right now we're trading here. We're about $5 away from this level. If we pop intraday, I won't say that I will do it because obviously I have to reevaluate real time when that trade might hit, but this would be the first level I would consider potentially day trading it as a short trade today. All right, so again, just good to break it down. Let's talk about DFS here. Now, this stock, you can see, look at the drop on earnings, but look at the comeback. So it kind of fell initially, and now it's kind of coming back. I hate when that happens as a trader because I need things at their lows or at their highs where when the market opens, they flush even more from their lows, and they give me this ridiculous move where it's like, okay, you're going to get a bounce. Once they've already bounced, it kind of takes the, the punch out of the, the trade, right? It takes the power out of the trade. Now, looking at the daily chart, let's flip over to the daily chart here real quick. Uh, by the way, I love earnings season and we're just getting into it. I mean, these, these are just great educational teaching opportunities with real alpha to maybe trade off of during the market session. Now, again, one of the things I see here is you've had this big move up and you were starting to curl over. In terms of support, the first thing I see here was at $99, there's a little bit of a gap fill right there. You can see right from here to here, there was a little bit of a gap fill. Now, the tricky thing is this, is that number one, pre-market, we were already at this level. Once you're at a level pre-market, I consider it to already have hit during essentially market trading hours, since I can buy and sell pre-market as well. Most of you guys can, at least in the US, if you have that ability in your accounts. Um, going lower though, where would I potentially think about having a trading opportunity on this or a buying opportunity? And the answer is pretty easy here. There's a pretty obvious level. Look at this area here, look at this high here, and look at this high here. So you got three highs all at the same level. 
right here. We put a trend line through those levels right here and it's right around $93. So 93 would start to get me interested. I don't necessarily expect it to hit that today, but 93 today would get me interested, um, maybe even as a swing trade, but just be careful. You know, Discover is telling us that the, the that credit card bills are not being paid. They're going into kind of claims. Um, they're, they're putting more and more money aside to cover losses. To me, that speaks to the overall underlying fundamentals of the economy, but also that means it's probably not the, the end of this, it's probably the beginning. I think this is the beginning of things getting worse, and I, my guess is it will continue that way. All right, guys, again, lots of stuff to discuss here. Here we have Humana. Look at Humana getting crushed. They basically came out and said that their earnings are going to be hurt because of rising costs. Look at the drop on Humana here. If we take a look at it, it looks like it got as low as around 380 this morning. If we zoom out to this chart, the chart's kind of a choppy chart. To be honest, it's not a great opportunity at this point. But the one thing I will say is you do have around a 350 low pivot right down here. There is a double bottom. This would be more of a swing trade on Humana. Obviously, it's a big company. It's not going anywhere. Somewhere around 350 to 355. If it dumps there in the next few days, there might be an opportunity on that front. Lastly, before I flip over and we look at like Bitcoin and gold and the rest of the commodity sector, just quickly noting here, take a look at uh, AMD. AMD is trading pre-market on the back of Taiwan Semi. Well up on the day. Yesterday, it closed around, looks like 160. It's trading at 160. Today. Now, the kicker here is if we go to the daily chart, there was a double top here. But what you can see is that basically at this point, where we are currently trading on the stock, we are actually above that level. So, right off the bat, that level is inconsequential to me as a trading opportunity. Now, maybe by the end of today, it reverses and closes back below. At that point, I would reevaluate is it a potential short because it was a reversal candle? It, it, there was a lot of sellers. But as of now, as a trading opportunity, you can't trade double top. You're above it already. So, you step aside. All right, back to center screen, guys. We're going to thank Lux Algo for being the awesome partner that they are. I told you guys that we are in the process, or I am in the process of working with them to come up with a bunch of indie Indicators. I literally want to be able to put a suite of indicators out that I use on a daily basis to find the signals, to find the levels that I find. And again, hopefully within a month or so, we'll start to roll those out. But here's a quick 30 second break from Lux Algo. Have you considered enhancing your trading experience? We have an amazing tool for you. LuxAlgo creates next-gen trading indicators to help the world understand the markets in a smarter way. They have the largest user profile on TradingView and are the only official Discord partner in the technical analysis space. LuxAlgo Premium operates seamlessly with top platforms, such as TradingView and Discord, making it the perfect tool for every trader. Take your trading analysis to the next level with LuxAlgo. Please visit the description below and sign up for Lux Algo today. All right, back we go, guys. Let's rock and roll. So we got a few minutes left. I want to cover Bitcoin and the rest of the commodity area here. Bitcoin continues to go sideways. If you watched yesterday's video uh, or, or live, you know that we were in the process of making an in spirit of bear flag formation. It was a little immature. Today, it's one more day towards maturity. So as of now, you still have this down move and this sideways consolidation. I would say you give this another two days. And if you can't break out of this bear flag pattern, the probabilities of a breakdown approach 75%. Now, 75% still leaves 25% chance that it doesn't break down. But in general, that's pretty darn good odds. If you're at a casino and you can get odds in your favor like that, you're going to do pretty darn well. So again, bear flag continues. Continues. Again, the more candles sideways we get inside of this range, the more likely the next move is to the downside. I've given you my target, 38,000. That would be your next stopping point if we see a flush on that front. All right, next up, let's quickly touch base on gold. Not a whole lot going on on gold here. Gold had a down day yesterday, a down day the previous day. We're getting a small bounce today. We're still very close to the all-time highs, this area here. As long as we don't pull far away from this and the dollar continues to go higher, this is a great scenario. One of the things I love about gold and continue to is that if you look at gold sideways move over the last few years and then you compare it to the dollar, the dollar has gotten quite a bit stronger than where it was a few years ago, and that usually would push gold down. Instead, gold has generally gone sideways. What that does is it sets us up when the dollar does have another fall for that breakout punch to come and gold should do well. Uh, yesterday in trading the close, I talked about Newmont Mining. I love that chart. A lot of the miners look very inexpensive after this recent sell-off and that is intriguing. Copper, let's talk copper. 
Copper to me is telling me a recession is coming. Timing is tricky. The reason I say that is copper is an indicator of economic strength or weakness. What we clearly see here is a trend line to trend line to trend line to trend line, right? Pivot point. And then look at how, again, you hit it, you hit it, you hit it again, you hit it and broke right here, right? And then look at the retrace to the scene of the crime and it getting rejected on the daily chart right here. Okay, so you're getting rejected. It's unable to get back above this level. To me, that tells me there is trouble brewing. We're likely headed lower on copper, which again, it doesn't bode well for economic growth when copper is going down. A couple other charts here to quickly go over. Oil is actually creeping up. Guys, I will say this on oil, and here's your oil chart. Be very aware you may get that inverse head and shoulders breakout here. I'm starting to become a little bit more bullish on oil in the near term only, but it has not triggered yet. We are literally borderline trading into this head and shoulder, inverse, inverse head and shoulder, mind you. Inverse is a bullish signal versus a head and shoulders is bearish. There again is. Here's your neckline. Look, we're right into that neckline. Let's watch it today. I would say you close above 73.50 today. You got a breakout potential on the inverse head and shoulders. The target is around the low 80s, 80 to $82 per barrel. And again, just a shorter term trade. Overall, I still think when we do get into a recession, you could see oil fall down into the low 60s, maybe the 50s. But just in the near term, nothing says it can't pop up. Okay. Uh, next up, natural gas. I know you guys love your natural gas here. Natural gas, again, hit yesterday. It kissed my level. It's hitting it again today. I have not entered this because I didn't get filled. But again, classic retrace. In fact, I called this in this game plan. If you've watched this, when we were up here, we talked the 618 Fibonacci, right? That was the 618 retrace of this big move down. We got the retrace. Then I said, okay, look for a retrace to the scene of the crime. And I put this trend line in right here. And look at where we've gone, right back to that level. This is technical support. Again, I am not in this trade yet, but I am monitoring it. If it pierces the, the 250 level on spot uh, nat gas, I probably will start to nibble. Remember, I'm a dollar cost average player. That's how I trade. I don't care how much I believe in a trade, how much I love a trade. What I've learned in my years of trading is that I am going to be wrong quite a bit. So by dollar cost averaging, I mitigate those risks a little bit. Sure, if it works perfectly on my first buy, I don't make as much money, but I'm not concerned about how much I'm, I'm making, right? If I'm making a profit, it's a profit. A profit is a profit is a profit. It's ultimately protecting that downside and being able to maneuver that is the key to a successful investor. All right, back to center screen, guys. I got to get going to the trading floor. You guys are rock stars, as always, with your amazing comments. Keep spreading the word. I'm serious. I'm going to give away some serious, serious cash in the form of gold when we get this stream, this game plan to 100K views per day. So let's keep spreading the word. If you find it useful, tell your friends and your family, and I will thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys have a great rest of your day. Take care.